developing a new IP obviously is very difficult. So starting from the ground up, trying to figure out what we wanted to make, what we wanted the game to be, it all really started with the modular Starship that you mount directly onto the controller. We had tons of early prototypes of that that went really successfully. So we started to build on that. Uh, you know, we started to expand on the idea and you know, that's where we really came to this core concept of, of creative combat and, and the, the idea of adapting the, the Starship to, to take on these different challenges. Starlink is an open world action adventure game. Our players take control of a team called the Starlink Initiative and they head off to a star system called Atlas, which is in the Pleiades, and fight to help save Atlas uh, from a threat called the Forgotten Legion. So it's a, it's a huge game, it's a huge uh, open world experience. You know, part of that open world experience, of course, is, you know, progressing as, as a pilot and building up your Starlink initiative. There was this real desire for a character to relate to and that emotional connection that is tough to have with that, you know, kind of spaceship. As cool as the ship is and, and there's this fantasy of piloting it, you know, you still want to have that character that you can relate to, that you can get attached to. Um, that you can have that choice of the character that relates most to you. And so that was an, another major shift in our development, uh, was uh, introducing the pilots. They've never used Starlink before. Go show them what it can do. The starter pack comes with Mason Rana, who sort of comes into the leadership position of the group. You have Judge, who's an alien member of the team. Um, he can slow down time with his pilot ability, and his skill tree is focused purely on this idea of beating bosses and having great siege tactics that can take down buildings and structures really easily and really well. And each of these characters brings a, a huge change to the game, a huge difference. Uh, the first thing is that the narrative will actually adapt dynamically. Uh, so all of these characters are fully voice acted. You're going to see them all in the cinematics. You're going to learn who they are and, and what their personalities are. And then when you take control of them, that'll actually adapt how the story plays out and, and how the narrative plays out because you'll start to hear that character's perspective. And each of these different characters has very different history in the world. So with creating our worlds, we always wanted to make something that had a lot of character, a lot of history. Worlds on it where you'll see ruins from thousands of years ago from an ancient alien races. You'll see ruins from just 200 years ago based on an electrum rush. It's sort of similar to the, the American gold rush of everyone trying to rush to the Atlas star system. And all those remnants are still on the planets, but the planets themselves have their own history. So we have a desert planet that started out as an ocean with a lot of ocean life and now it's all dried up, it's all desert and you see these giant skeletons from the ocean creatures that used to be there hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago. One of my favorite uh, elements on each planet are these, there's each planet has kind of an ancient hidden secret that uh, is not something that anyone in the game points you to, it's something you have to find yourself and, and explore and, and there's such a, a wonderful reward in, in discovering these secrets and going. Uh, they're often protected by very, very elite enemies. You'll have to bring out your best combos and your best gear, uh, maybe pull in a co-op partner to get in there, uh, but you're rewarded with some pretty special treasure if you uh, manage to pull it off. The game features full uh, drop-in, drop-out, split-screen co-op and someone else can just pick up another controller if they're having a tough time with a boss fight, you know, and, and dad wants to jump in and help, uh, they can grab that controller and jump right into that experience, and drop back out. It, it works so well with this idea of creative combat where two people solving problems and experimenting together uh, just results in, in these wonderful moments uh, that you can share. We always wanted to make something that was bigger um, for a lot of audiences. Uh, we wanted to build a game for everyone. We focused more on skill levels. So a child who isn't good at twin stick shooter is really identical to an adult who may be 30 that isn't good at twin stick shooter. So what can we build in the game that allows that player to still express themselves, still be creative with the ship configurations, be more based on exploration, more based on building different types of weapons that they can use that doesn't require a lot of accuracy. So again, it was less about age groups and more about skill level. There's mods that you can collect, you can mod your weapons, you can mod your ships. Each pilot has a unique skill tree which really pushes them into their, their kind of unique play style uh, and pattern. And then you know there's also a whole layer of building up your alliance and, and finding allies, getting benefits uh, from, from those allies, doing missions for them. Uh, you know, even up to upgrading your mothership, the Equinox. Uh, so there's really a ton of depth that we can't wait for people to get their hands on and, and play with.